Shirley's body was found the next morning by a jogger. Lawrence would say that the recording that he made of Shirley during her rape and torture, it offered nothing other than the evidence of a threesome. Adding that towards the end, Shirley was screaming for him and Norris to kill her, and that's why they did it. No words. In November of 1979, Norris, he became acquainted or reacquainted with a friend named Joseph Jackson. And Joseph Jackson was a dude, was incarcerated with Norris. And they became like friendly and they talked and stuff. Norris um, had confided in this individual as to his and Lawrence's um, murders over the last five months. Uh, and he included really graphic details of the murder of Shirley. And at this point when he confided in this guy, Shirley was the only victim whose body had been found. And then Norris also told this Jackson guy that in addition to the five murders he and Lawrence had committed, there had been three additional incidents in which he and Lawrence had abducted or attempted to abduct young women who had either successfully escaped their attackers or in one instance had actually been raped but released. When this guy heard Norris's confession, he went to his attorney and was like, what do I do? You go to the authorities, like, what do you mean, what do you do? But whatever, at least he went, okay? He confided or he consulted with his attorney and asked him, what do I do? And his attorney advised him to go to authorities. So this guy agreed and, and he and his attorney went to the LAPD, a Redondo Beach detective, and his name was Paul, was assigned to investigate Jackson's claims. The detective initially noted that Jackson's statements as to Norris's confessions did match reports on file of several teenage girls who had been reported missing over the previous five months. In addition, the incident Norris had confided to Jackson, where he claimed he and Lawrence had sprayed mace in the face of a woman, and this lady, she had been dragged into the van and then raped by both men. And this lady had matched a report that was filed in relation to an incident which occurred on September 30th. And in this file report, a young woman named Robin, Robin said that she had mace sprayed in her face before being dragged into a van and then raped by two Caucasian men in their mid thirties. And then she luckily was released. We don't know why, but she was. Thank God for her, you know, like lucky. This Robin lady, she did report the abduction and the rape to police, but they had been unable to identify the two men that she had mentioned. But this Jackson guy who had been talking to Norris Norris told this Jackson guy about the Robin girl. So they were like, okay, if this Robin girl can say that Norris is the one that got her and whatever, like identify them, then we could have like a lead or whatever, right? So investigators go out to Robin who is now living in Oregon and they show her a series of mug shots. Without hesitation, Robin is able to identify two photos presented to her as those of the men who had kidnapped and raped her on September 30th, um, Norris and Lawrence. So once they got this positive ID, police placed Norris, I almost said Roy, Roy, his name is Roy, but we're calling him Norris, remember? Under surveillance, okay? So he's under surveillance. And within days of being under surveillance, they observed him dealing drugs. On November 20th, 1979, Norris was arrested by the Hermosa Beach police for parole vi violation for dealing drugs. That's where how they got him. The same day, Lawrence, he was staying and like living at a Burbank motel. He was then arrested for the rape of Robin. Now, when they brought in Lawrence and Norris, they also brought in Robin to again, ID them in person and say like, you know, line them up and say, yes, that's them. Now, when they lined them up, Robin couldn't 100% say, yes, that's them. You know what I'm saying? Like they looked a little bit different than the images she saw earlier. So she said, I'm not sure, I'm pretty positive, but I can't 100% say so. Police were a little irritated by this, but they still arrested them because they had violated their parole. Lawrence, the one who was at the hotel, he had drugs on him, so they got him that way. Thank God, you know. So then 
because there's more bitch, there's more. Police search Lawrence's hotel. And while they're searching, they find a bunch of Polaroid pictures. And on these Polaroid pictures, they see Andrea and Jackie. Remember the previous victims we had talked about? But they find pictures of them and both of them had been reported missing. So when they see these pictures, they're like, bingo, got them. <laughs> 